Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. For this post, um, let's take a closer look at the project file for that liquid example that I posted the other day. I've posted three previous guides for making these liquid effects. So the links are in the description um, if you want to know how to make them. We're not going to be going through and doing them step by step. Uh, but if you check out those guides, you'll see that everything here is just made by putting all those elements together and getting them to work together. And there's a couple of other things happening here, so let's go through and have a closer look at how this was done. Okay, so the key ingredient for the project are these two filters here. We can ignore fill, that's just for colorizing the layers. We want to look at the levels and the Gaussian blur. Uh, so I learned this filter combination from the Motionla YouTube channel. There was an awesome tutorial there um, showing how to do liquid effects with replicators. And it's not something I would have discovered for myself uh, in a million years. But I'm really grateful to the Motion Love channel for showing us how to do it. Um, and unfortunately that channel isn't up and running anymore. I used to put a link in the description so that you could go and watch that tutorial. Um, you know, I think it's just important to state providence here. Um, so, um, what I started doing after I saw that tutorial is adding the effects to emitters and uh, brushes on various brushes with Bezier paths. And that's the kind of thing that I posted before for you to check out. Um, but for the filters themselves, you want to add a Gaussian Blur and set that to 100. It's keyframed here because it has another job to do as well. But you want to set that to 100. Then you want to add your Levels filter and you want to have it actually set to Alpha. Then you're going to come into the histogram and then open up Opacity. You want to set the black in value to 0.49 and the white in value 2.51. Yeah, so I used to post a link to the Motion Love channel to learn how to set up the filters, um, but it's not up and running anymore, so might as well show you how it's done directly. Also, if you go and check the previous guides, um, check the links in the description. There, one of them has a link to download the project file with these filters already set up for you. Okay, so having a look at the groups and layers, this group up here right on, this is just the text effect over here and everything in here, um, if you go and check out the liquid right on guide, you'll see how to do this from start to finish. Uh, here I have two key elements here. And uh, there's two mask sources. One mask is for the fill, the other mask is for the pour, and they're kind of like inverses of each other. So this is the main fill mask, and this is the pour mask. So what I've done here, and I, I could have done a better job, um, basically I took my main mask source, I converted it to points, and then opened the path and then just drew more points to make a block around it to try and invert the shape. Okay, so there are two mask sources working together. So back here in the liquify group, everything is happening uh, in these groups here. So in the animation group, there's just a bunch of uh, emitters and Bezier paths working together. So the first emitter to look at is this one down here, emitter pour. I'll just turn off these guys. So this is emitter pour. Uh, it's just an emitter with uh, its set to point and the emission angle is keyframed to just shift left to right. 
And the mask applied to this one is that inverted mask, so that it clips out the emitter to, so that it makes it seem like the emitter starts to fill the base as it reaches that point there. So from there, uh, we have this emitter here, emitter rise. Uh, no, we want to look at emitter fill first. So if I just turn the mask off, the mask is the main uh, heart shape. So this is uh, this emitter is a line that is just sending up splotches and splurges in that direction. And it's clipped out to fill into the mask shape. And so then we have this group here, uh, I shouldn't actually call it emitter rise, I'll just rename it to riser. And there I have this rectangle shape. It's masked to the heart shape. So it is just a rectangle keyframe to rise up on the y-axis. And right around here, it starts to interact with emitter fill to create these um, bubbly bloops. I also did add another emitter and uh, linked it to the top edge of the rising shape to give it even more splashiness. Uh, but I preferred it to be off in the final animation. So the next element then are these spurts. So we'll have a look at those now. I'll just turn off the other groups so we can get a good look. Okay, so in this group here, spurt, I have got uh, four Bezier parts. And if you check out the liquid write-on guide, you'll see how these are done. Uh, so these are Bezier paths uh, set to airbrush. Uh, scale over life is important because it's the scale over life that creates the draw in, draw off effect. You don't need to animate um, both point offsets. If I grab um, this one here on the left, you can see it's just a Bezier path here. It's set to uh, airbrush. Uh, with that 66 spacing there at 25 and uh, dynamics is turned on so I have it uh, at life of one and scale over life starts at 200 and so then after 30 frames it drops down to 47 percent and that's what creates that tapered effect so I've got this group masked out to the pore mask, the inverted mask. So as they run their path, they kind of hug and con conform to the shape of the heart, the outline of the heart there. Okay, I'll just turn everything back on. Is that everything? Yep, I'll just turn off the rising bubbles one. Okay, so, all right, the last element uh, is this little drop up here. It doesn't look so great. These um, filters don't look so good when uh, objects have a small size. I'm still trying to work out how to make that look better. But again, that is just another Bezier path set to airbrush at scale over life. It's just uh, a smaller version of these ones running on a more linear path. Okay, so this morphing effect, this is covered step by step in the morphing guide. And as I mentioned before, the liquid text write-on, that's all covered in the liquid text write-on guide. Uh, so there you go. Um, if you were interested in 
how it was done when I posted the other day. I hope that this makes things more uh, doable for you. Uh, I just wanted to point out really the masking, how that was done to make them all work together. Thanks for taking the time to check it out. Thanks for watching.